In the 1930s, Fritz Zwicky made two remarkable discoveries. The brilliant but cantankerous astronomer found that galaxies tend to group together in clusters, bound by their mutual gravitational pull. But Zwicky also discovered that the clusters weren't massive enough to hold themselves together. So he surmised that something else was holding them together. A type of matter that produced no light, but that exerted a strong gravitational pull on the visible galaxies around it. Other astronomers quickly accepted the idea of galaxy clusters. But the other discovery was basically ignored. Yet that second discovery was more important to our understanding of the universe. It told us that most of the mass of the universe is different from the normal atoms that make up stars, planets, and people. Today, scientists at the Texas Cosmology Center and elsewhere are trying to solve the mystery of just what makes up most of the mass of the universe. The mystery of dark matter. So dark matter now has a very solid uh, definition for astronomers. And it mainly means a type of particle, which we have yet to detect, that is the dominant component in the universe in terms of mass, and the dominant, and certainly the dominant component around a galaxy. Unfortunately, uh, we haven't detected this particle yet. That's why we call it dark. Uh, you know, in science, whenever we don't understand something, uh, dark matter, dark energy, we tend to call it dark. It turns out that the total amount of matter of all kinds, ordinary and not ordinary, is about six times as much as the amount of ordinary matter. So the remaining five, six is something else. It's got to be something that we don't see because we're not seeing it. It's something that's out there. It's dark. That simply means we're not seeing it. Scientists began to pay close attention to dark matter in the 1960s and 70s when astronomer Vera Rubin measured the motions of stars on the edges of spiral galaxies. A star's speed around the center of a galaxy depends on the galaxy's mass. More mass has more gravity, which causes a star to move faster. Rubin found that the stars were moving much faster than they should based on the mass of all the stars, gas clouds, and other objects that she could see. Her research showed that something else must be pulling on the stars, accelerating them to higher speeds, dark matter. It produces no energy of its own, no visible light, radio waves, X-rays, or other detectable form of energy. It reveals itself only because it pulls on the normal matter around it. This pull makes spiral galaxies spin faster and binds together clusters of galaxies that span tens of millions of light years. There's one particular example, something called the bullet cluster of galaxies. Two clusters of galaxies have collided with each other. Uh, the galaxies, which are relatively small compared to the clusters, have mostly missed colliding with each other and have continued on their way. Ordinary matter, the gas that filled the clusters of galaxies, underwent a collision and remained more or less in the center of the pair of clusters and is now glowing hot from the effects of the collision. The dark matter has just sailed through. It's a vivid example of uh, evidence for cold dark matter. Over the last four decades, scientists have considered many explanations for dark matter. Astronomers have looked for rogue black holes, faint clouds of gas, and the failed stars known as brown dwarfs. But none of these objects comes close to accounting for the amount of dark matter. So most scientists have concluded that the dark matter consists of elementary particles, a model known as cold dark matter. Uh, particle dark matter could be as tiny as uh, oh, 
much, much smaller than the electron, or it could be much, much larger than the proton. Um, in general, um, what people think dark particle dark matter is, it's probably something we call a WIMP, a weakly interacting massive particle. And here we're talking about particles that are 100 times as big as a proton, 100 times as massive as a proton. Not only do these particles produce no energy that our instruments can detect, they rarely interact with other forms of matter, or even with each other. In fact, countless dark matter particles probably pass right through Earth every day and through everything on it, including people. That makes the particles difficult to detect. One approach, uh, the most direct, is just to wait for them to hit us. Uh, that is, uh, take large tanks of detector material. Uh, most of the dark matter particles will just go right through, but occasionally one will hit a nucleus in the detector material and cause it to recoil. Uh, these experiments are going on in various underground laboratories throughout the world. A second technique is to watch for dark matter particles to ram together. Although such interactions are rare, there are so many dark matter particles out in the universe that a few of them are bound to come together. When they do, they should annihilate each other, producing a flash of energy and a grab bag of normal particles. A space telescope that looks for gamma rays, the most powerful form of energy, is keeping an eye out for just such flashes. Yet the best chance of finding the true nature of dark matter may come in an underground laboratory in Switzerland, the world's largest particle accelerator, known as the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. You can also look for particle dark matter in particle colliders. Most theories of physics beyond the standard model have dark matter candidates in them. And so the LHC is looking for these theories of physics beyond the standard model. And one of the things that they're going to produce are dark matter particles. Um, dark matter particles are a little bit problematic to look for in the LHC in the sense that because they're so weakly interacting, they're just going to fly out of your detector. Uh, but you can look for the things that are produced with the dark matter particles. And so that's really the key to looking for dark matter at the LHC. Even the LHC is a bit of a long shot, though. The dark matter particle could be too ephemeral for the LHC to detect. If so, then its true identity could remain hidden for a long time to come. One of the problems is that astronomers really, for the most part, only know about dark matter through the gravitational field it produces. And there are lots of different particles with different properties that would produce the same gravitational field. You could have twice as many particles with half the mass, or a hundred times as many particles with a hundredth the mass. And uh, they might annihilate each other, or they might more or less. Um, there's, it's just very difficult. Uh, it's going to be very difficult. We might get lucky, especially with the Large Hadron Collider beginning operation, but uh, we can't be confident about this.